Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer and we are playing the brand new Man the Guns expansion for Hearts of Iron 4 playing as Japan in an all torpedo build. So we want to ultimately build a navy uh, that is based on torpedoes and see whether we can defeat the Americans or whether we'll fail horribly. Uh, in between episodes I did advance time a little bit because we're not quite there yet. We're still in 1936. Um, but I did want to show you uh, the involvement of the Soviet border conflict. So we've just been asked uh, whether we want to join the Anti-Comintern Pact by the Germans. So Germany proposed that we sign a pact to address the Comintern's that's basically the Soviet Union goal of spreading communism worldwide through the use of subversion and violence. Do we want to address the common turn by the use of subversion and violence or do we think that they want to spread that via subversion and violence? I think the latter. So, uh, nevertheless, by signing this pact, we agree to share intelligence on the communist threat and act in close cooperation against this menace. Yes, we are definitely going to join. Uh, the Soviets are not going to like that, but uh, we can enact the decision to test the Soviets. Now, we share a long border with the Soviet Union in Korea and Manchuria. A large number of potential flashpoints exist where our forces might clash at any moment. For us, this creates an opportunity to test the res Soviet response to a minor provocation. Ultimately, uh, this is a series of border clashes that happened throughout the 1930s and that basically culminated in, in a battle at common goal, and I'm sure I'm not going to say, uh, I'm, I'm saying that wrong, um, but it was somewhat of prelude to uh, the position where Japan was finding itself strategically boxed in by its resource demands. It's it's sourcing a lot of resources in it, there's uh, to, to its island. There are very few natural resources on the island itself, still the industrial base does need that. Um, and at that time there was still some debate on, on whether it should go for a northern route, uh, sort of attacking the Soviet Union, maybe in cooperation with the Germans, hint, hint, uh, or whether it should go more of a Chinese route, or ultimately the southern route. Um, ultimately, Japan lost pretty badly, actually, uh, also because they didn't really have enough tanks, as we don't, um, against the Soviet Union. And the Soviets were uh, successful in throwing back the Japanese, uh, which did also convince the Japanese to go for the southern route and ultimately bring them into conflict with the West. Now, we do hope to win this conflict uh, because I hope that it's going to give me a couple of positive modifiers, in particular again uh, on the um, land warfare tab, so that our war against China will be more successful because ultimately we want to get into the naval war. Uh, we want to test out our torpedoes. So, yeah, we don't, we don't really want to uh, attack the Soviet Union for now. Unless, of course, uh, except for this small border provocation now, uh, we do want to do the border provocation, basically, I think, with our marines that we are crossing this river over here. It is winter now. I don't think that's a critical issue. Uh, but what uh, happened in between episodes is I uh, researched basically these uh, national focuses so that we do get the new research slot. Uh, we got, are getting a couple of... I think there was, this was a law change. Um, and this is, was a change of, well, basically giving us a little bit more uh, production output. Uh, we also researched the army expansion law, uh, which does give us 30 land experience, and that's going to come in very handy because I do want to retrain the marines. Uh, the marine division right now is sort of suboptimal. It does have some engineers, uh, but you can see it has a combat width of 20, uh, 12. Um, ideally, you'd want to have a multiple of 20, so um, yeah. I think that's what we want to go for. We want to fill that up a little. Uh, we will not be able to do so because ultimately, actually, I did uh, train up too many troops. So I think what we have to do is disband one of these units first. And now we should hopefully be able to edit this template, add a couple of more Marines. Let's see whether we can still save that. No, we cannot because that would still put us over our special forces limit. So we actually have to defeat, uh, delete one more of our marine squadrons, uh, which is very unfortunate, um, but I do want to have somewhat of an ideal composition. So yeah, let's, come on, production. Uh, let's go ahead and edit this again to have all marines. That's nice. That would cost us 20. That does allow us to put in another support artillery. And now we have exactly, uh, we are using our 30 uh, points. Of course, that does mean that our existing uh, naval, uh, sorry, our existing marines 
Uh, are a little bit at a loss of uh, organization and most importantly equipment. So we are going to have to wait a little bit um, until we... Ooh, you're actually a Clementine. It's pretty good. Pretty well. Good. Um, right, so um, yeah, we are going to have to wait a little bit until that uh, stuff comes over there, but it shouldn't take too, too long. Um, we are, of course, not doing anything in terms of upgrade. We have um, accumulated some infantry equipment, so that is nice to see. Uh, we also have insufficient resources, but that's not too critical. In terms of research, uh, we have uh, been able to do the basic infantry equipment. Uh, we are re right now researching radio, and I think that is uh, what we really need, because reinforcement rate plus 5% is a huge modifier, uh, and we are going to have that in 41 days, so I think that will be the time uh, when we kick off the conflict with the Soviets. Apart from that, uh, we, in terms of our Navy, uh, we have accumulated quite a bit of Navy experience, uh, which I do like and which will allow us to modify quite a couple of our ships. Um, now, primarily, of course, we're going to want to go for the torpedo uh, setup, but of course our legacy fleet, uh, we will keep that and we will modify it slightly um, so that ultimately it's a little bit better. US are repairing. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, most of our guys have finished up um, their training, so they are all uh, experienced now, uh, including the submarines, the submarines, including most of the Kido Butai, all of it actually, um, including the, no, not the second battle fleet, because that does include some coastal defense ships, which I'm honestly really not that sure I'm going to keep around. Um, they are weird design, they are really weird design, uh, but so far we haven't uh, changed any of our ships, so... Let's start the game. It's taking a while. Uh, oh, and of course, let's pick a national focus. And I do, well, we could go for um, more industrial build up, nationalize the war industry for more military and civilian factories, maybe coal liquidification even. Um, but you know what? I think new naval estimates are what we want. We are very excited to get our hands on the naval stuff. So, yeah, let's do this. Right. Other than that, uh, of course, the naval experience is still building up, even even gradually, uh, even if it's only gradually, I mean to say. Uh, we have also... Ooh, uh, Italy is successful, finally. Uh, we've also finished our first uh, carrier that we have built ourselves since the start of the war, so that's nice to see. Uh, it is currently training uh, in accordance with the Akadai, which is a converted battleship, which is nice, I guess. You guys are repairing because you took some damage. Uh, while you were being uh, trained up and you can see all of our ships being built over here so we are going to get another carrier uh, in 1937 that was simply in our build queue so all of these things were in the build queue when we started the game good decisions are available we can test the soviets and um, we have to keep an eye on the industrial stuff because of the repairs of our ships uh, the steel demand is fluctuating a little bit and i want to keep that on uh, keep taps on that you can also see that we are again making some fuel, so the daily fuel gain is about, no, the current fuel is about 300,000. Uh, we can keep about a million fuel capacity, that's because we uh, did build up um, a couple of fuel silos. We are also building up um, a couple of synthetic refineries. Now these don't really give us a lot of fuel, it's, it's 52 fuel uh, per refinery, and the refinery takes 15 civilian factories to build up, um, while on the other hand from from oil, from extra oil, you get about, I want to say, 60, 60 or so uh, fuel for each point of oil that you have. So it's you can trade for eight fuel for one civilian factory. So that's a lot of oil. Uh, uh, sorry, for eight oil for one civilian factory. Eight oil is a lot. It's it's nearly half a thousand fuel units. So uh, these synthetic refineries might not be the most worthwhile worthwhile. Uh, thing that we have but you know what I think it's it's fine if we are building some uh, I also do want to build up a couple of military factories ultimately yeah so let's do that over here good so uh, we are primarily waiting for the radar technology radio technology and uh, we are also researching a uh, passive sonar and depth charge throwers these are naval um, research things to do against submarines so we need uh, the passive sonar and the active sonar and together with the depth charge throwers i think that would give us a very good um, anti-submarine warfare platform uh, which i do think that we need ultimately um, i am worried about uh, american submarines uh, the american submarines were historically very very successful together actually 
with the uh, somewhat undercredited um, bomber fleet that was mining in Japanese coastal waters uh, late in the war. But yeah, that pretty much strangled the, the Japanese economy, and the Japanese never really found an answer to that. They they never really, on the other hand, developed many anti-submarine warfare um, initiatives. They even didn't really ever engage truly. I think you're done training. Okay, so that's good. Uh, they never really truly even engaged in any type of... Um, I think you can get into the re reserve squadron. Uh, they never uh, really built up a convoy system either, which is kind of weird because it's... The, Ameri the British in particular did did understand that quite um, early on in World War One, and then kind of forgot about it in World War Two early on, but um, really discovered that quickly. Um, also, the Americans uh, on the East Coast... Oh, there we go. Radio, lovely. Uh, and basic fire control system. So, um, yeah, the Americans on the East Coast in the early days of the war suffered pr quite badly because um, they were running ships individually and the Germans had their second happy time. Um, yeah. We don't want to fall foul of that, so uh, we are going to research anti-submarine warfare duty uh, war items early on. So, it is still, I uh, know it's early 1937, th so we can in fact build improved machinery goods, which I think is pretty much a no-brainer. And in terms of electronics, there's not much that we can do to speed up research, so we are not going to do that. And dispersed research is something that I would like to see. Construction likewise is nice, but Max Factory, this is just so good. Factory output, dockyard output plus 10%. It's really nice. So, yeah, I think this is this is what we want to do. Uh, we also picked up a couple of... Um, we picked up Mutsum Masa Yonai, a silent workhorse, which does give us a lot of more political power. I think 0.3 political power per day. And we did pick Kawasaki Industrial Concern, which does give us increased industrial research speed. So that, too, is very nice to see. So, at any rate, our Marines are ready. There's only one Soviet division over here. So let's reduce um, time a little bit and actually trigger our decision. So let's test the Soviets and see what that does. So, for 30 days, something, something is going to happen. Activate window of opportunity or escalate the incident. So I think it's up to the Soviets to decide uh, about one of these things. Uh, we also discovered passive sonar. That's nice. We're directly going to go into active sonar because ultimately I think it would be nice to uh, research some anti-submarine warfare platforms early. Just convert a couple of our ships and be ready for the war as soon as possible. Of course... Destroyers could be built up uh, later on, but then again, we are waiting for our uh, decision on whether we want to use torpedo cruisers or torpedo destroyers, uh, which is going to happen un as soon as we have researched this. So um, at that point, we'll probably be switching over to building our torpedo platforms pretty aggressively. So um, what we can get out before that time would be very lovely. So I would hope that that is going to go well. Let's keep an eye on the decisions. 23 days. Um, let's accelerate that slightly because I do want to know what the Soviets say to us. Form special air landing services. Hey, we could do a lot of things, but you know what? I think all in all, uh, this would be so lovely. Yeah, but for now, really, only the test with the Soviets is relevant. We should have 150 political points very soon, so in case there uh, is anything that we need over there that could be addressed. Um, I'm also thinking about um, one of the military high commands, uh, Yasuo Okamara, the infantry expert. Don't get me wrong, I don't expect this war to escalate completely, um, but just in case it would really be nice to, to get an early win in here and be more ready for China. So yeah, let's think about that. Oh, uh, it seems like we do need more steel, so uh, let's ask the Germans, please, to give us a little bit more. Again, I'm not too concerned about the aluminium or the rubber. Um, we are building up fuel reserves, so that's nice to see. Uh, let's make sure that we are not using our carriers in vain, though. Yeah, indeed we are. So the Argaki is finished up. It's a regular carrier, so we can uh, split it off. And you rejoin it with the Kidobutai. And I do like that we have this button over here to merge these guys automatically. We'll need some 
a repair, but that's all right. And now we should be filling up our fuel much more aggressively. Yeah, that's lovely to see. Construction is gonna go is going on all right. New naval estimates, lovely. Let's do the cruiser modernization. And that should also be very lovely. Good. Decisions. Decisions and decision timeout. So, I expect that it's not the war propaganda that we are worried about. We are in the operation. So, we have a window of opportunity. If we don't complete that, we will lose political power and lose war support, which would not be nice. Or we can escalate the incident. One of the following must be true, fully controlled by Japan, control is Japan, 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 and we have one border with bloody Vostok. There's only one division here currently, so indeed, we are going to go and escalate the incident. That does change uh, the setup. We can end the conflict, or it does end automatically in 90 days. Uh, we can escalate it further, that would give us more combat with, um, or we can de-escalate it. No, we just escalated it, so that's all right. Here we go. We have a border conflict and should probably go ahead with the time over here. And who is attacking? Okay, someone is attacking from over here. I want to make sure that our Marines do get a shot in this. Okay, I, well, we can not do that. Okay, here we go. So yeah, a lot of our guys have um, come up and are trying to join the war uh, and you can see that the radio is very very helpful over here because we have a chance of reinforcing of 7% otherwise it would only be 2 percentage points so it's a really really great increase. You can also see that we are now dealing a lot more damage than they are. We are dealing about 19 or 80 depending on the time of the day. They are dealing 60 so we are wearing down their organization very quickly. They are bringing in reinforcements though, so it would be very nice if we could overwhelm them immediately before they get too many people in. And that didn't quite work out. But it's fine, but it's fine. We are a little bit exceeding the combat width, so that's not good, but still, even on a unit by unit basis, uh, we are dealing more damage and I think this guy will drop out soon. Yeah, there we go. So I would hope that we can do that better. And you can see that they don't have radio, so it's taking them longer to reinforce and then it's uh, taking us to get into the war, so that's uh, good to see. Uh, we're also lacking steel. Just Reich, the German Reich, sending us more, uh, more steel, which is okay. Good. So we also have Navy experience. We are gaining up some Army experience over here. But yeah, they are bringing in so many reinforcements, as you can see. It would have been so nice to overwhelm them early on. But we weren't quite able to do so. Um, I do not think that we can use our aircraft, can we? So let's try to do that. Can we tell you to do close air support over here? I don't think we can because it's not uh, seen as a proper war. So yeah, there's no air involvement. Uh, we are doing better than they are still. The combat width has exceeded, has has widened, so that was nice. I think that was a combat event. Our guy is, our guy is a little bit better than, than theirs. Who exactly is that? Kirishiro? Who are you? I don't see you. That's weird. Alright. At any rate, I think we are winning, even if just slightly. Um, and their reinforcements have grinded up a bit. So let's a grinding war over here. Let's um, accelerate it a little bit. Uh, by the way, I did have to uh, turn off the music in the background because for some reason it kept on looping. I think that just like a broken record, it was just going rung, rung, rung. Uh, and it did that a couple of times. So there might be a little bug uh, with uh, it being introduced with man the guns. Yeah, now our organization is starting to break down a little, uh, which isn't that great. And I'm not sure whether we are truly dealing more damage anymore than they are, so... I think, likewise, we should be bringing up some reinforcements over here. Um, incidentally, can I ask you guys, you gentlemen, 
to be on a border front over here. Yeah. So some of our guys will be dropping out of the battle soon, including our marines. Um, and I do want to keep bringing in fresh guys so that we can overwhelm them at some point, hopefully. We had 50%, which is not good, which is really not that great. Uh, we could modify our government, and I think what I'm indeed going to do is pick the infantry gentleman over here. Uh, that should give us a little bit more attack, and hopefully we help us in overwhelming them. Right. Okay, so... Ah, oh, right. Right, 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 right. So... This army is in a border conflict. Okay, so... Yeah, it's about being in this army. Can I, can I ask you to join that army? I cannot. So this is an extra army, actually. Um, I can also not reassign you. Uh, what I can do, however, is... Pick a new general? I cannot. Can I give you any combat orders? I cannot. Okay, that's uh, a little bit unfortunate, um, but we can look at research. Right, so it is 1937. Uh, we could do construction, we could do oil processing, uh, which would be very nice. Um, or we could do fuel refinery. And I think that is a very good thing, because if we look over here, uh, most of our oil is coming in from the 35 fuel, and that would give us a huge ben uh, benefit in that regard. So, yeah, let's do that. Uh, I do hope that we are making enough resources now. Particular steel would be nice. Yeah, but the border conflict... You're not doing that great, my friends. You are really not doing that great. I think we are losing. God damn it. I would have hoped that we would win. Why are you not committing to this? Ugh. Yeah, and we're losing. It's better to fail with honor than to have never tried at all. So here we go, Japanese defeat at Lake Kasan. Following the clash between Soviet and Japanese forces in the border area around Lake Kasan, uh, the Japanese ambassador in Moscow has requested a ceasefire. Several Japanese assaults on Soviet position failed with heavy casualties during the battle, raising concerns in the Japanese military about the capabilities of their forces. So we do get some army experience. That's uh, honestly not what I would have hoped. Um, I would have hoped to do quite a little bit better than that. But yeah, here we go. Uh, why are you actually suddenly over here and not in a marine squadron anymore, I wonder? Because I was pretty sure that you guys should be... Are you actually the right leader for this? I think you are, actually. Where are you? You are this gentleman. You're only number two. Career officer, cautious. No. No, I don't like you. I would like you as the commander of my marines. And of course, for marines, uh, we do need a different symbol. There we go. Okay, that was frustrating to be to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, um, let's pick our marines and let's tell them to get over here to. Okay, you probably need a railroad. So strategic redeployment to Pusan. Oh well. Now, why are you actually yellow? I didn't quite understand. At least we uh, did get some army experience, though that is helpful. And uh, we can redesign our missions and uh, have a look at our infantry equipment over here. So let's edit our division infantry divisions. Uh, you can see they are pretty white already, 24. So I think that's a very nice chance to put them up to a very broad and tall template, where we would have an infant uh, an army division with of 40 which I think is pretty good uh, we'll also tell you to oh we just don't have enough for that ha that's unfortunate but you know what Let, let's put you to 38 I think that's all right uh, we can do that gradually step by step there's no need to uh, modify that 
Research a lot. Oh, did I? Yeah, okay, that was the active um, Sona. So that's nice. And once we get the depth charters, which is going to be in 15 days, we can go ahead and develop new uh, methods for on, on uh, an anti-submarine warfare platform. That's going to be all right. Good. Other than that, uh, I would have loved to see the improved airplane catapult. So uh, let's actually look for the details of that. Yeah, so that is a ship installation. So let's research that. Um, so that we can maybe refit some of the older stuff. Or do we uh, need to go for any industrial uh, things? Well, we could do for the oil processing or other things, but for now, I think that's a good choice. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy about this, although not about the uh, Soviet border conflict. Uh, nevertheless, what we can do now, I think, is... You know what? Let's uh, actually pick two of these... Divisions, uh, let's send you towards down here. I think that's all right. And we can actually send our army towards this front now. Because uh, now I think we are pretty sure uh, that the next war is going to be in China. And you know what? We can also prepare for a combat. And you, gentlemen, should potentially watch more of this northern sector and prepare some sort of offensive just so that you get some bonus good uh, the garrison group is still going to watch the border with the soviets uh, and i think that's a good idea good so uh, let's briefly look at our naval situation and then i think we are probably gonna so the first heavy cruiser you're right there is that cruiser uh, that carrier that's not completely finished and um, the first the kidobutai is doing well you guys might want to train up. You guys are all right. Although I see you're carrying a Mutsuko class, which is interesting. You guys haven't really trained, but then again, you're really, really old uh, cruisers by now. And uh, yeah, it's also nice to see that this guy is all right. So we can actually merge them together. And that should reduce our fuel consumption by quite a bit. And build uh, allow us to build up more... Uh, of a backlog. I think we are gonna build up much more fuel capacity, uh, stockpile capacity, because uh, at some point we are gonna go to war and that might not be altogether too nice. So yeah, that's all right. Um, in terms of what we are gonna research next, I think we're gonna go for long land torpedoes, then maybe supremacy of the battleship, because it does allow us the Curie, Curie Naval uh, Arsenal design company, which grants a bonus on screens of 25% torpedo attack. Um, it does reduce submarine detection, so I think we want to design our um, our destroyer, our anti-submarine warfare platform before that, then research that, and then potentially go for the torpedo cruisers. But yeah, before that we're going to go for the long lands, I think, and maybe, just maybe, um, for the national war industry in between. Also small art, no? No, I think, yeah. And um, that would be sort of the direction that we are going here. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, uh, before I go, do let me know whether you think I could have done anything differently over here. Um, I think we did as much as we could. We were bringing in the best divisions. Uh, we were redesigning them before we um, started the war, really. Um, there wasn't any capability of bringing airplanes, but maybe we could have gone for a better general. I don't know whether we actually had any capability to do so, but yeah, um, do let me know what you think about that. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I will play a little bit ahead just until the point it does become interesting, probably once we go to war with China or once we start redesigning our first ships. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.